Welcome to UTG TV, brought to you by Dance Party Massacre Clothing. Today we're in... What, are we brought, what is it brought to Dance you by? Dance Party Massacre Clothing. I thought you said Dance Party Master. Okay. Yeah. Dance Party Massacre. Sorry. Dance Party Dance Master would be pretty awesome. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's just start over. No, I want that in there. You want that in there? Yeah, All right. of course. It's on. Of course. All right. <laughs> Dance Party Massacre Clothing. Yes, anyways, we are in Austin, Texas for South by Southwest 2011, and we are sitting here with Kevin Devine. Hi. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good, I'm good. Now, uh, you just finished another interview. Have you had a lot this week? Um, I guess it's all relative. I, there are probably people here who do, like, 70 interviews in the, in the <laughs> six days they I have. Um, I think it's at the end of it all, it's gonna be something like five shows and six interviews. So I think that's plenty for it's pretty good. a dude who doesn't have a record out or any reason to be talking to anybody. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's been nice. But you have a record coming out. Eventually, yeah. Uh, eventually. We're, we're, we're still kind of, we're, we're in that weird place where we finished recording it, um, but we still have to get it mixed and mastered and still have to kind of finalize how it's coming out. And, but those things are, are all happening. It's just it's probably not going to be out till August, maybe something like that. So, but uh, but yeah, it is coming out eventually. Not in time for it to be like justified for me to be at South. I'm not like I'm not necessarily here drumming up interest in it. I'm here because they asked me to come, <laughs> and I was like, I'm, I'm going to end up being off tour for most of a year. Like I got off tour late last July and probably won't go out for a proper tour again until the record comes out. So it's kind of an excuse to play like 10 shows, go to Texas, eat good food. Food here is wonderful. Yeah, and, and, and it's been really rewarding because constantly reminded that the people who like this are really, like there's a lot of bands here that are doing, promoting a record, doing that whole circuit and all the shows we've played have been full and people want to sit down and talk and feel really grateful about that because there's probably more relevant people you all could be talking to so well I mean we like to talk to you no well, you do have a record that's coming out eventually yeah uh, and you had you've had some time away from the solo project for a bit of bad books so what was it like to kind of come back to writing for a solo record again um I think it wasn't that different in, in the sense that the songs ended up, that ended up becoming Bad Book songs were songs that were probably going to be solo songs. They were, they were songs that I, I didn't know we were doing Bad Books when I was writing those songs. Um, and I was just planning, I was just kind of writing because sometimes you just do that. And then I thought, oh well, I think I have like five songs. I think this is the beginning of the next record. And then the Bad Books thing got real. It was like, oh, we're at, we've been talking about doing that forever, but it was like, oh, let's actually do it. And so it was kind of like, uh, let's do it like next weekend or whatever it was. And it was like, well, I have, I have five songs. And so I brought those songs down and they became the Bad Books songs. So it wasn't like I was writing stuff with that band in mind, which is probably what the next Bad Books record will be more like. Like Andy and I actually probably writing more together, together and but um but this was different in, in a sense too because I when I got off uh, we did that thrice tour last summer which we knew was going to kind of be the last Brothers Blood tour and then I went and did a week with Not a Surf in, in Europe and when I got home from that I knew I was going to be off tour for a while it was kind of like the break yeah and. One thing I wanted to do to kind of make that transition a little less um, crazy making in my head, because it's always such a speed change from here to home, yeah. was I was like, well, I'm gonna go to the studio every day and try to write. And even if you don't write a song every day, like just even if it's for three hours and go, like not in my apartment, go to our rehearsal space and, and work. And so I ended up writing 15 songs between August and January. Um, and that was different because it was more like, the process was more of a process and less like, well, whenever it comes, it comes. It's more like I'm gonna go and I'm gonna make something happen. And 
I think what ended up happening was I found out that you can kind of catalyze that electrifying moment that you're waiting to just have happen. You can like mess around and clear your throat and then sometimes nothing happens but sometimes something comes where you had no idea it was going to and so I ended up writing 12 songs that I recorded for Between the Concrete and Clouds which is the title and then two songs that are going to be our Record Store Day single that we did with Rob Schnapp out in LA and then one song that is probably going to be on the next record I just I really liked it but it didn't fit so you know it was it was more like me in a room actually doing home recording for the first time since I was like in high school with a four track and layering harmonies and trying to like tinker with the mechanics of the songs a little more than I have in a while and so that way it was different but not as much from bad books even just as different from the last couple of years of songwriting that were kind of just more like poof this was more like Chiseling? Yeah. I chisel a lot. So, what would you say are the influences that came out of that process? Like, what's in the writing? Like, who, um, like, like where did you draw from? Where's the source or? there? Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if it was... I think what, what it, my, I was trying to be mindful of... I wanted to keep some of the stylistic diversity and musical breadth that I thought we kind of came into with Brother's Blood but make a record that was a little more di easily digestible and listenable. I've never really made a record that was like, I, mean, I don't write music like the Ramones or like the Strokes or something like that, but I like that those first two Strokes records are 30 minutes long, they end and you want to play it again. Yeah. Um, I've, <clears throat> I've never really done that. I've always made records that are like 50 minutes plus an hour, you know, and um, so I kind of had that in mind. Like I wanted to make something that was a little bit more, my hope was that when you finished playing it, you'd want to start it again. And there was a flow, the songs kind of almost bled one right into the other. And not worrying so much of some of them, because some of them are kind of rock songs. Some of them are, we did some things with some atmospheric stuff and some keyboard stuff and some things that are a little more, that we didn't really, haven't really done much of. There isn't anything on the record that's just me and a guitar, which is the first time I've ever done that. They're, they're all starting that way. There's 15 acoustic demos, but they didn't, they didn't, they all became full band things. And some of them are up here and some of them are still, you know, quieter or whatever. But, so that was really it. It was just trying to not, and, and I'm, not, I'm not really good at writing it in one style the whole way through anyway but I kind of wanted to make something where it doesn't matter it's like you know listening to stuff like the White Album or something like that it doesn't matter that the songs are crazy all over the place like not that I'm saying I'm nowhere near that at all from a quality perspective but just in terms of taking cues it was like that's the stuff I listened to and if those bands didn't care about whether you know you go from like the first two songs on um, the second disc of the White Album are Birthday, which is like the most ridiculous kind of pot, and then the next thing is Your Blues by John Lennon, it's like this crazy gnarly blues song where he's singing about how he wants to die and he feels so lonely. And they're tonally like that, but it was like, so what? One song ends and the other one starts, and I kind of, you feel a little disoriented by it. So if there's a way to make a compulsively listenable 40-minute record that's also stylistically disorienting, that's what I wanted to make. Whether anybody else thinks that's what well, we did or not, we'll find out in August. <laughs> but that's what, that was what we were trying to do. Well, I mean, you make it sound exciting. Uh, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you pulled it off. I want to believe that you pulled it off. Well, I appreciate your faith. Uh, we'll find out. We're going to see you do you play some of these new songs. Will we be, have a chance to see you tomorrow, maybe? Yeah, I'm probably going to do one or two, but they're going to be, you know, tomorrow's just me, acoustic. Last night was our full band showcase, and we did two of them last night. We've been doing on this tour two or three every night and playing a Bad Book song, too, So that's, which has been fun. So kind of like diversifying the set list a bit. So now that you have some time off before we get going, what will you be doing for the next few months? Um, we have, through April, I'll be in New York and we're doing a couple of, we're doing a show at the 
at Webster Hall in New York with old 97s, which is cool. We're going to do a show with Brand New in Baltimore. Um, we're doing something else, college, a couple of college shows, and then in May I'm going to go out to California and do a three-week residency, I think, maybe at this place, the Hotel Cafe, um, and I might do a little bit more recording with Rob Schnapp when I'm out there, maybe if there are songs. I'm going to try to write through April, too, and it'd be kind of nice to be like halfway through another record by the time this one comes out. Yeah, just to be on just in the process. One. Yeah. It also just keeps you, keeps me sane to keep working. working. Yeah, well, I like it, and it's like I used to feel really self-conscious about identifying as a songwriter or as a like professional. Like that's like as a musician, I felt like it meant there was some I don't know what it was, something in my head that was like that's tacky or something, and it's not tacky. It's true. I haven't. That's what I've been doing for the last six years to make a living, and. I'm doing it for 17 years because it's fun, but I've actually been able to do it for a living since since 2005. And so, if I'm gonna do it, I should do it. Yeah. And why not? Like, oh, write yeah. when you're not touring, you write. When you're not writing, you tour. When you're not doing your own stuff, you write for other people. And you know, like, it, so I, I'm kind of in that place now where I just want to be working all the time, and and finding out that you can do that and still. I can go to the studio every day and be home by 7 o'clock to have dinner with my girlfriend or something. It's not like I have to have that and not have a life, to. You found the balance. Trying. Trying, anyways. Getting Some closer. days way more than others, and other days it's completely upside down, but <laughs> for you trying, working on it. Making an attempt. That's, That's right. All. That's all That's all you, you, that really is all you can do anyway, so. Stay tuned, Kevin's album, August maybe. August maybe. Yeah, August your maybe. Uh, you can find all of his updates on Twitter and everywhere else. And check them out if you can. Thank you so much for checking us out. Uh, We'll talk to you later. Thank you.